Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the penny alloy lab. Uh, the procedure is there for you when you are uh, looking at this. You can follow the procedure along as I do it. Um, to do the, to the lab, first thing we need, need to have is we need to have a couple pennies. So we have that. Uh, one penny is all we need. Uh, we need three molar hydrochloric acid. So we got that stuff right here. Now, safety concern for us today is that three molar hydrochloric acid is very corrosive to organic tissue. Uh, including skin, eyes, all that kind of stuff. So we want to be careful not to get that on myself. It's also why I'm wearing safety protection and eye glasses today uh, for that. I'm going to place both my pennies into the acid to allow the acid bath to clean those pennies. So any of those, uh, any material or anything that's on the pennies that would make them dirty, uh, the acid is now cleaning that for me. So I'm going to set a three minute timer and in three minutes, I'm gonna to wanna to take those pennies out of there and rinse them off, okay? Now, while I wait for these to uh, get clean, I'm gonna go on to the next part of my lab where I need 40 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide base. The one molar sodium hydroxide base is also a corrosive uh, substance to human skin and organic material. Um, sometimes there's a misconception that acids are bad for you and bases are not. In reality, both of these uh, solutions the base and the acid both are very corrosive to organic material. So we want to make sure that we do not get this on our skin and definitely do not get in our eyes, okay? I need 40 milliliters of this. So I'll be using a graduated cylinder to measure out those 40 milliliters. This 40 milliliters is not um, quantitative in nature, meaning I do not need to spend a ton of time to get exactly 40. Just by luck there, I got it pretty close to 40 as is. Um, because this is not a quantifiable thing in this particular lab, I am not going to be measuring that any more precisely than that, okay? Sodium hydroxide is a clear liquid. There is a tint to this today just so it provides contrast. Um, so we can see the difference between our acid, which is our clear liquid, and our base, which is this um, kind of a pinkish color to it. I'm going to add that to a 150 milliliter beaker here and pour that in gently and carefully. And then I'm gonna put it on my hot plate and I'm gonna turn my hot plate up. So my hot plate is sitting at 540 degrees. We'll give you a chance to see that screen, 540. That's not the actual temperature that this is gonna to get to. Um, that's just the maximum temperature that the inner coil can get to on our hot plate, okay? We are two minutes into our acid bath, so I got one more minute on that, and then I'm gonna rinse that off. So I'm gonna go grab some paper towel, because I'm gonna need that here for the next set, set of my thing. I'm also gonna need a Bunsen burner, so I'm gonna pull that out and get that set up to be used later on in our experiment so that is now ready for us and then in addition I need some zinc and if you're reading along with me in the lab procedure the lab calls for a pea size amount of powdered zinc so we just have powdered zinc right here and I'm going to grab just a little bit of zinc, not a whole lot, just a little pea-sized amount. It's all I really need to have this in here. And that's gonna go into my, my base, okay? Now, it's okay that I put that in there early. Um, it's not gonna hurt it, it's not gonna affect anything. The trick is we need to get this to heat up so we have it boiling hot. Because the process we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have these pennies, and I am at my three minute mark here, so now I'm gonna remove my pennies and I'm going to rinse them so I get that acid off my pennies. Set them down on my paper towel. Maybe I'm gonna grab this other one. There it goes. So rinsing that acid off Placing these on my paper towel now, getting them cleaned off. Okay, so now what I'm waiting for is that for my solution to heat up to a boil, all right, at this point in time. I'm done with my acid bath. I'm gonna leave this here because that can be reused for 
a future hour. So I'm gonna get that on, out of the way for us right now and talk a little bit about our pennies here. So our first step here was to put the pennies in the acid bath and they're now safe to touch again. Um, and if you've noticed or not, the pennies kind of have a little bit more, a little bit duller look to them than they did before. That's because the acid actually ate away any material that was on the surface of the penny. It also started to attack the copper a little bit also. So that's okay because we just need a copper coating. Now these pennies are both from you know late 1990s, early 2000s, and they make really good pennies for this particular experiment. And the reason is that the inside core of these pennies is actually zinc. And just the outer, like 3% or so, is actually uh, copper. So when we are working to create this brass alloy, which is the ultimate goal of this lab, is to turn the outer layer of this into brass. Because we have a zinc inner core and we have um, the copper layer, and then we're gonna actually put another layer of zinc on the outside, that's gonna create a good environment so those two things can melt together when we create the, the alloy brass between the zinc and the copper, okay? It does work with older pennies too, but I have found that it just tends to work better with the newer pennies as we do this, okay? So, if you can hear, this is close to getting ready to boil. And again, the pink color again has nothing to do with the actual um, experiment. It's just there to provide some color balance for the video today, all right? I am done with my zinc powder, so I'll get that out of the way. I'm also done with my graduated cylinder, so for the day. So I'm gonna rinse that out now that I'm done with that. And I'm gonna get it off my station because one thing about graduated cylinders is that they can actually fall and break. So getting that off the table makes it better for me, okay? So it looks like I got a boil started now inside of here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my pennies to my mixture. And I'm gonna keep them separate from each other, but then let them both be in there at the same time, okay? Now this has to cook or boil for an additional three minutes. During this time, what is happening is the base, the sodium hydroxide base, is attacking the zinc powder. And because we have a high temperature and we're doing this at a boil, that zinc powder is then creating um, an ion in solution of zinc ions. And because of an electrolytic imbalance, those zinc ions will then attach themselves to the copper surface. It's called zinc plating, okay? Now, the premise of this lab isn't to go through the chemistry behind zinc plating. The idea is to build the alloy, okay? But this is just one piece that's part of that puzzle. So as this sits here for three minutes and boils, we are essentially plating the zinc. We're taking it from solid powder into its ion state in solution and then reattaching it as a surface coating on our um, pennies, okay? I have three minutes on this. In the meantime, I'm gonna get a lighter to light my Bunsen burner. And again, all these things in our lab are timed out to provide enough time for the proper procedure to happen. The boiling is important here because this needs to be at high heat, okay? Um, boiling is nice, it's in solution, it's controlled, but it's high heat. Um, we're a couple minutes in, and I'm just gonna take a peek at this to see how it looks right now, to see if we're getting a good result. If I can get my hands on a penny, and if you take a look, we are getting a good result. So we're starting to see that that penny is now a very silvery color instead. We'll give it another minute though to finish this process. And in the meantime, we're gonna set up one more thing. So the very last piece of this puzzle is we need to have a cold water bath for us to drop the penny in when we are done with the flashing stages of this lab. Now, we're coming up upon step 10 in our lab. And this is probably the most important step in terms of timing. So we wanna make sure that if we were doing this lab in class that we would be pre-reading this to be careful about what we're doing. So I'm gonna remove my pennies now. They've been in here for three minutes. And I'm gonna shake off any 
extra zinc I see on there. And I'm gonna rinse them off. And it's okay if they stay in a little too long. Too long is not gonna hurt them to be in there. I'm gonna rinse this one off. And then I'm gonna double check to make sure there's no like chunks of zinc. Cause if there is, I'm gonna use my paper towel now that they're safe. And I'm actually gonna just kind of wipe that off. Because I have found that any extra powdered zinc on here gives me a poor result in my next stage. So I'm gonna wipe that off. Ooh, there's a lot of powdered zinc on that one. So we're gonna wipe this off. And there we have a really kind of cool looking silver penny, okay? Here's our other one. Now, I'm gonna leave one of these and I'm not going to do the last edge step with one so we have a visual comparison of them at the end. So let's just take this guy and we'll put him off to the side for now and we're gonna do the other one. So here's our steps. We're done with the, we're done with the boiling, so we wanna turn that off. And at the same time, I probably wanna get that flask off of the hot plate, because it really doesn't need to be up there anymore, okay? We have two different types of tongs in our drawers. This is a, called a beaker tongs. It's got a rubber coating, and that rubber coating is really nice to grab beakers and move them around and put them where you want. And even though this was boiling hot, it's completely safe to set on our table. The forceps is this guy, which is made of metal, and this is easier for us to put into heat and flame. So this is what we're gonna be using next, is our forceps. So I have my Bunsen burner here. I'm gonna turn my gas completely on. I'm gonna adjust my flame here. And I need to check one more valve, because I think I have a safety valve turned off. And that should do it. Yes, now I have gas. So we will light the Bunsen burner. And our goal today, and I know it's probably not very visible on the actual uh, video, but our goal is to get a nice double flame. And the reason why we want that is because we want to have a really nice hot flame, okay? And that's, maybe you can see in the video, but I do have a really nice double flame. It's, it ends right about there. I'm actually putting the forceps in the flame right now and what we kind of have, okay? So when I'm all ready, I'm gonna take my cold water bath and have that sitting here ready. I'm gonna take my penny that's been zinc plated now. So it looks kind of a silver color, but that's actually a zinc plating that we have on that. Zinc is kind of cool. Zinc plating can be done like this to make things look silver but it actually has a, a place in industry. Zinc plating actually creates corrosion resistance. So you actually can get zinc plated like nails and hardware at stores that can be used outdoors, okay? So they won't corrode. Uh, they don't plate copper, they plate iron in those cases, but it's still kind of the same idea. Now, here's our trick, and the timing has gotta be really spot on. I'm gonna put the penny in the flame. Notice how I'm holding it on the edges only here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't wanna have a dead spot or a a spot that doesn't get even heating on the face of the penny where it's gonna look the best. And my goal here is to put this in the flame and watch it. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that silver color to turn to a gold color. As soon as I see that, I'm gonna drop it very quickly into my water. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is I wanna go from this kind of semi-molten stage on the surface where I'm creating the brass, and I'm gonna drop it into cold water that kind of flashes it or then locks that brass production in place by going from hot to cold very quickly. Okay, so here we go. If I can do this right the first time. Holding it on the flame, holding it, waiting for the color change. There it is. And I'm done. It happens that fast. All right. And if I did a good job, when I am done, we have a brass penny.
Okay. So let's take a look at these for you guys. I'll bring over one of our original copper ones. I'm going to turn my Bunsen burner off because we don't want to have an open flame anytime we don't need to. And if we zoom in now down into our pennies, here we go. We have the original copper color that we saw before. And then over here you can see it better. We have the zinc plated penny that was created uh, in the boiling base that was corrosive. And we have the brass one that we created. Okay. Now, all three of these are still legal tender. We can actually take them and spend them. People might think you're kind of goofy, you know, using a silver one, um, but people don't really tend to notice that one too much. But those are our three pennies, okay? Now, the last piece of our puzzle here with any good lab is we've got to do some cleanup, okay? So the base solution now is sufficiently dried. Um, this has to go into the fume hood, into a disposal bottle, because we don't want to dump a corrosive liquid down the drain, all right? The leftover acid, we're actually gonna save for the next uh, time I do this because it hasn't been completely used up, so I'm actually gonna recycle this and use this again. The water can go down the drain, my forceps can be washed away, and everything else can just be put away. Then I'll wash my hands, and I'll be done with that. Thank you.